This show is very, very, very high end. It's some of the best builders in the world. You know, we always call it like the Super Bowl of chopper shows, right? <laughs> Once a year, the best bike builders in the world descend on Southern California for the country's most prestigious chopper competition. Over the past eight months, 26 invited builders poured their blood, sweat, and bank accounts into works of motorcycle art. Some run professional shops, some are fabricators by trade, for others, chopping and riding is a passion that fills their spare time. Building a bike for this show is a full-time job, as the drive to craft something worthy of the competition pushes everyone to the limits of their talent and creativity. At stake is a small handful of hardware, bragging rights, and two coveted tickets to the Moon Eyes Hot Rod Custom Show in Japan. We'll meet some of the builders who created bikes in the running for Best Chopper, Best Performance, Best British, and the ultimate awards of Builder's Choice and Best in Show. But they aren't just battling the bikes in the pen. Hundreds of ride-ins are eligible to win two if they're parked on the grass. That plus a show unto itself in the parking lot makes Born Free the ultimate gathering of vintage-inspired custom choppers in the world. This recap video is brought to you by Throttle Addiction. With thousands of chopper parts, a 90-day return policy, and free shipping on orders over $100, ThrottleAddiction.com is the best place to build your dream bike. Check out their selection of custom handlebars, fuel tanks, made in the USA hardtails, and so much more. For more than a decade, Throttle Addiction has been manufacturing and selling the best custom parts on the market. Build, customize, and ride with ThrottleAddiction.com. I'm Aaron Loveless from Prunedale, California, Central Coast. This is Tail Gunner. Uh, it's built on a 1936 Harley Davidson VL chassis. So I started with a a chassis that was in pretty bad shape. I cut off all the castings, stretched everything pretty much two inches everywhere because it had to fit this monster Coslo motor in it. So the story with the motor, Andy Coslo was an Excelsior racing engineer in the early 30s, well, 20s through 30s, 1931, they were going out of business. And they let Andy take all the casting tooling home with them and he started casting his own uh, cylinders and heads to convert Harley-Davidson motors into Hemi's. Uh, they're really big bore. This has a 3.6 inch bore, so it's about 1,640 cc's. It's a Hemi, and it's got a supercharger that I built. So one of the funny things about this bike, I found this old World War II fuel valve. It went on a bomber dash. Um, I put it on there, thought it was cool, and then when my friend, one of my friends saw it, and they're like, hey, uh, you know that thing's probably radioactive, right? Really? So, yeah, they put radium in the tips of these switches. And it's surprisingly hot for how small it is. But it glows in the dark. That's why they put it on there, so you can find it in an emergency at night. The half-life of radium is actually, it's something crazy, like 6,000 years, I could be wrong. Don't quote me, but uh, the phosphorus that's in the paint burns out. Even though it's 99% as hot as it was, it's not getting that full glow. Probably harmful if you suck on it for a few hours. <laughs> it's running mechanical fuel injection. I built the fuel pump. It's, uh, it was originally a Hillborn fuel pump that I gutted. Took the rotors out of, uh, it had some real weak bearings, so I wanted a longer space in there to put a pair of uh, bearings in so it can handle the side loading because it's running the supercharger too off of that primary cover. You can see the linkage over here, how it runs. So it just runs off the inside of the primary chain. There's a, a tensioner here, runs up to the fuel pump, crosses over to the supercharger, and the blower, it adds about four and a half, five pounds of boost. So realistically, it's the equivalent of a 2000 cc engine. I cast these cylinders and heads because I didn't want to mess up original Andy Coslow cylinders because they're super rare. There's 31 castings total on this bike that I made myself. Um, the Magneto is homemade, it's all 3D printed. This is 3D printed aluminum, 3D printed carbon fiber. Uh, the guts are, there's just a, a capacitor, a little alternator in there, and it runs off the points on the uh, timing cover. I made a, a custom dash for it. This is made out of a 3D printed mold. Uh, 
I started with modeling clay, kind of sculpted it how I wanted it, and 3D scanned it. And then I used that file to make this, kind of did an art deco theme. Made my own airspeed indicator with a duplex uh, face, so it's running boost. I laser cut those needles, and this is actually the mixture for the fuel injection. Um, this is investment cast. I made these grips for it out of aluminum. So pretty much all except for the cylinders and the heads, I cast in my backyard the heads. I machined the casting patterns and then sent it out to a foundry where they poured them for me. One of the nuttier things about the bike is it has this shotgun starter that I made out of stainless steel. So you put in a 12 gauge cartridge, close it, and it has a self-cocking rotary breech here. So it's one action to unlock, one action to fire. Yeah, it's kind of unreliable. When I first started it, it was uh, maybe one out of three times it would start with the shotgun starter. Well, that black powder is extremely corrosive and there was a bunch of it that was collecting inside the rear cylinder. I, I wasn't really thinking to clean that out before the show. And so what happened is that festered in there and it made a whole bunch of rust. Uh, it lowered the compression and I'm having real trouble trying to start it and demonstrate it here. Um, so I'm gonna open that up. There's probably some rust on the valves that's uh, causing too much air slipping by it. I cast these little Art Deco style kicker pads. This fuel injection throttle body came off of a Lycoming aircraft engine. I made this scoop out of stainless steel. Um, you can see this, this honeycomb on the uh, air cleaner there. That's all 3D printed honeycomb. Airspeed indicator also is World War II aircraft. This is a pitot tube. These would go on the leading edge of the wing. And so this is a, it's got a pitot static line. One of them, that's just static pressure. The other one takes the air coming in, pressurizes a diaphragm that moves the needle. The seat over here, that came off of my 1929 Harley P shooter. I'm just borrowing that. I'm probably gonna convert back to a pogo seat after the show. Sheet metal I got off my buddy Doug. Uh, he sold me one original paint uh, tin, and the other one I painted to match. I'll leave it up to you to figure out which one's which. I was gonna run uh, tire chains like a hill climber, but there, after I got it all put together, I found out there wasn't enough clearance, and I'd end up ripping off that fuel body. So I saw these tire spikes, these carbide spikes online. I thought they looked pretty cool, like an ice racer. So that's sort of the direction I went. The pipes, those are just, uh, they're pre-bends that I bought, cut and welded together. There's four of them total, uh, two pipes per exhaust valve. That's about it. The build took about 10 months. Uh, I'd been planning to do something like this for a while because I wanted to reverse engineer that Coslo stuff anyway. And then uh, Grant gave me a call. He's like, hey, uh, see so you're working on the Coslo stuff. You want to incorporate it in a born free build? And I was like, yeah, why not? So. I know it's not exactly born free esque, it's not exactly shiny, but I like it. What I do for a living mostly now is actually those, uh, those cylinders. I sell those to people wanting to convert big twins to uh, Andy Coslow motors. They work on uh, VL, UL. You can technically put it on a knucklehead or any other big twin, even though that's not exactly period correct. Um, I do superchargers for 1932 through 53 Fords. I also make smaller blowers for Ford Model A's. And ignition switches, uh, I make boost gauges, all for period correct racing. Uh, pretty much all I do is period modified stuff. So my name is Aaron Loveless. You can follow me at Loveless Performance on Instagram. My website's lovelessperformance.com. If you're interested in early hop-up parts for uh, 20s, 30s, 40s, Harleys, and Fords.
My name is Matt Whitlock. I have a shop called Wrecked Metals and we brought a 1959 Panhead. This Panhead is my personal bike. I've had it for 23 years and it was time to give it a makeover. So we ran it through the shop. I have two guys working for me that are extremely talented. We have Sean Rogers and Ryan Stallcup. And we just gave it all we had. We we're just gonna, you know, this is a special thing for us. We haven't done a, a bike for Born Free before. We've worked on a lot of bikes that have been in Born Free builds, but we've never done one ourselves. Um, so, you know, we didn't take it lightly. We wanted to go for it. We, if we we're gonna do it, we were gonna do it. We started with the frame. Um, it was pieces and parts that my friend Mike Jocan had at his shop and he provided the parts and then we he jigged it up and then I welded all the brackets and all that and then Sean finished it off and then Ryan gave it his final polish and we sent it off to Chrome. So we did a chrome frame bike. I've always wanted a chrome frame bike. We did a two inch narrowed original Harley Springer, uh, UL Springer. It's the same Springer I've had on my bike for 15 years. And Ryan kept telling me, we got to narrow it, we got to narrow it. And he was right. It was definitely set off the build. It gave it a real narrow look. The bike before had shotgun pipes on it, but I never liked how they blocked off the front of the motor. So I wrapped the front pipe around the back, brought it up, shotgun, gave it a little attitude with the tilt up on that. You know, we specialize in high-end fabrication with stainless. So we tried to build everything we could out of stainless or have it chromed. I'm really excited about the bike because after Born Free, I get to ride this bike. We're gonna take it on the Lolo Run. We're gonna do a two week trip up to the San Juan Islands. And yeah, this summer I'll get to break it in and that's my bike. The axle plates, what I did is I just took the top of the axle plate and I made a gusset that followed along the top and had a curve that went up the frame. So I tried to make them, you know, a lot of those castings on the original frames, they look really good, but they don't flow into the tubing. So I was just trying to make everything flow correctly. The sidecar loops are panhead sidecar loops. And my buddy Mike is like, no, you got to you got to flip these upside down. They just, they flow better if you flip them upside down. So we did upside down and then I, I made a gusset that goes wraps around it. You know, I wanted the gussets for looks, but also I'm going to be riding this bike. So I wanted everything to be really strong. I just didn't want, you know, I'll have this frame till the day I die. So, you know, I want to, if I hit a pothole at 80 miles an hour, I just want to know it's safe and it's going to get down the road good. Sure. I made a, the oil bag is made out of a lowbrow uh, fender because I wanted to have the same curvature as the rear fender. So I took a fender and just reformed it and built an oil bag out of it. And um, it took a lot longer than I thought it would. And, you know, as I'm building it, because we build stuff like that all the time, but usually you just use mandrel bent tubing. And I was like, eh, it could have probably been easier to do it out of mandrel bent tubing, but I still wanted it. I just thought it was cool that it had the exact same curve as the rear fender. So I have a lot of hours into a, an oil bag, but whatever, it's my oil bag. It's all good. It's hard to pick out what my favorite part of the bike is. Um, on the, the fuel tank, I did a trick where I just got two uh, narrowed Sportster tanks and I flipped them. So it's, if you look at the tank, it's, it's two tops. The bottom of it is a top in reverse. So you, it looks, you know, it looks from, if you're looking down on it, it looks like a Sportster tank, but from the side, it looks more like a wassail because it has that curve to it. The frame is one of my favorite parts of the bike. It's just so smooth and with the chrome, it just reminds me of my old BMX bikes from back in the day because we had to chrome everything, you know? And I wanted really to give a look when people looked at it that they wanted to ride it. Like, even though it is over the top, polished, all that stuff, I want it, it's a bike, like, and the thing rips. It's a 93 cubic inch motor, it has a 503 cam, like this thing kills it. I've, I love this motor. Oh yeah, definitely shout out to my crew at the shop. I mean, Sean Rogers, Ryan Stallcup, 
to Scott at Chemical Candy Customs for just killing it on the paint. The flames look so good. Shout out to my family for putting up with me for the last, whatever, eight months being at the shop way too much. And I'm ready to get back into normal life. I'm Matt Whitlock, I'm from Boise, Idaho. And you can look us up on Instagram or Google Wrecked Metals. And uh, yeah, check it out. My name is Josh Allison. I'm from Danbury, Connecticut, and I'm a part of uh, American Metal Customs. This year, for my uh, Born Free 14 Invited Builder bike, I bought a 38 knucklehead that's completely handcrafted. Um, it's got dual port carb heads, M5 linkers on it, open valve rockers, and um, I'm, a, I'm a custom metal guy, so I love making hand form, you know, gas tanks, fenders, oil tanks, bars. I took a VL frame this year, completely chopped it up, and then you know made it my own version. So it's very highly customized, the handmade Springer. And um, I don't do a lot of paint on bikes. A lot of times I leave them bare metal or do patinas. And so this year, um, it's been like seven years since I painted a bike like this. To get that crackle paint effect to work right and do it, like I you know, saw in my mind, had to actually do it twice. So painted the whole bike and then had to come back and sand the whole freaking thing down again and then redo the process. And it's kind of a wild process. You do the first base coat, then the base coat, how thick you lay that on matters to the top coat. And once you hit the top coat, it does that effect. And then after that, we came back and put two different pearls on it and then did a bunch of gold leafing. I'm a really organic builder. I don't draw anything out. I just get inspiration from different things. And this bike actually, I was inspired by a, a Chinese teacup and it had some cracks on it, really bougie white. I think it was bone china with the gold ring around the top. And I thought, man, if I could make my bike feel like that, that would be incredible. So that was kind of like, you know, my inspiration on maybe the feel of it. But what I do is I just kind of jump into it. You know, I have loose ideas and every piece for me builds the next and the next. And um, it just kind of goes, you know, as I see fit. And um, when it feels good, I go on to the next part.
I love Art Deco styling, you know, I love buildings, I love architecture, so there's a lot of that that definitely influences me, and I love on the, you know, in the 40s and the 50s, the way they built cars and bikes, so I do take a lot of that, and it does come off in my work. Yeah, the oil tank was kind of wild because it's such a wild, weird shape, and so the oil tank, to achieve those shapes, there's, you know, reverse curves in it, it, it was uh, actually a really hard piece to make. I was actually pressure testing it and actually my, um, I tripped up on my finger and squirted a bunch of air in it and it actually form shaped it a little bit, but perfectly. So it was like this really weird accident, you know, it didn't blow it apart, but it did blow out the back. So I had to knock the back in, but it made some wild shape up top that I was like, oh my God, it was like a happy accident. What I did this year is I actually, my pet cocks are hidden underneath there and they got two clip rings on them so that each carb can have a pet cock. So that was something that I've been thinking about, you know, how cool that would be not to see it. Cause a lot of times on clean tanks, pet cocks and all that start, you know, messing it up for me. And then because of the shape of the tank and having the pet cocks underneath, when people looked under, I wanted it to feel really bougie. So that's actually uh, red dyed leather that's put under there. And then my spring uh, holders are a matching of the leather too, to kind of pull it through the bike. This isn't my first time at Born Free. And you know, you learn from the past that you, this show's very, very, very high end. It's some of the best builders in the world. You know, we always call it like the Super Bowl of chopper shows, right? The amount of talent here is insane. So every time you come into it, you know, you gotta push yourself immensely. And so for me, that's just a part of me as a builder in general. But when you also have that pressure and knowing what you're coming into with Born Free, you really, you really got to lay it all down on the line. For me as a custom bike builder and a metal shaper, to me it's about making this handcrafted piece that is one of a kind and something that you would never see. And that's one of the things I've always, you know, I think why I fell in love with, you know, metal shaping because if I can dream it up, I can literally create it. And I think that's also been kind of one of the things I've been known for is, you know, building these wild tanks and stuff. And it's just a lot of fun because there's no, there's no rules to it. You know, in American Metal right now, we're, we're super busy. We're happy to be here. Full, full paint and body, full custom metal work, full builds, hot rods, bikes, choppers, and then obviously the whiskey, man. You know, everybody knows where we go, the whiskey comes. My name is Josh Allison. We're out of Danbury, Connecticut, and the shop is American Metal Customs. You can follow me, Joshua8787 on Instagram, Josh Allison on uh, Facebook, and then American Metal Customs on uh, Facebook. Instagram, and you can get on our YouTube channel too where we have a bunch of killer content.
Cactus Panhead. I live 90 miles west of uh, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. My old bike, I call her Sexy Lori. Uh, she's an original 1953 engine and frame. Started out, it was a total torn apart, missing, missing pieces basket case. I set the engine in the frame and I stood back and I looked at it thinking to myself, I'm gonna build one of a kind that nobody, <laughs> nobody else has ever done before. The dished out tank Indian Larry, so cool, love that. That's the first reason. And then the second reason, the way it's easy to mount up high, shows off top of the pan motor. It was uh, the main reason of that tank. Being the traveling guy that I have been for several years, I knew traveling that that tank wouldn't be big enough. It's three and a half gallons. So this tank here, which is three gallons, was uh, always in the works of the planning when I started putting it together to build the sissy bar to carry it, plus hold all my gear. Yeah, I've been down to Colorado and Arizona a couple times on it. Been to Sturgis, uh, 2019, I think it was, 2018, 2019. So this is six years that I've been on the road with it. Well, this trip here, I left so I live 90 miles west of Saskatoon. I left there, rode down uh, to Chicago, and I got down to Chicago there. My sweetheart was down there running the meeting, so I was down there to see her for a couple days. And, uh, and then from Chicago, rode down to Phoenix. So I got no uh, speedometer or odometer. So I have no idea. I don't keep track of miles. I don't worry about miles. When the gas tank's empty, I fill it. When the tires wore out, I change it. The handlebars, well, I just, I wanted to get creative. That's where this idea, this idea of the knots come from. It was uh, just to do something different. When I built the bars, they were just standing straight up and then I was, I was gonna make handlebars like ever, like all the rest with them bent over, but I thought I'll wait until I got a seat on it, the sissy bar, my packs, so I can figure out the right height that I want them. Before I even had all this put on there, I, uh, I sat on the bike and I stood the bars on there and I'm sitting there and I'm like, heck yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna run these straight up. Here they are. <laughs> because they're everything solid mounted, I built this all with a purpose in mind, this gap in here, so that because of the rigid frame and bouncing down the road, those move, those will move like that with all the bumps and the potholes and railroad tracks. And this is six seasons that I've been on the road with the old bike and I've never had any problems with them. They work great, I love it. <laughs> I, this is what freedom looks like, feels like, to me anyways. Cactus Panhead, if uh, you're interested in my travels, I, I do all, all of my stuff. I'm on uh, TikTok, on Instagram, uh, Cactus Panhead, spelled with K's, K-A-K-T-U-S.
My name is Adrian Inman. Uh, I brought my 1995 Sportster to Born Free, and I live in Long Beach, California. Oh man, so I got my bike two years ago, and uh, you know, buddies got me into it. I see them in the garage. They're hard tailing this shit. So it was only a matter of time. I went over to the throttle addiction tent and uh, someone helped me. The price was right. The rest is basically history, man. I just started wrenching and working. Uh, I will say this, the hard tail kits that you guys have make it so easy for someone just getting into this who doesn't know anything. The slugs, the way it slides in, all you gotta do is chop them in half, clean up the holes a little bit, fits in perfectly. Fender, sissy bar, seat, hard tail, yeah. The brake. The brakes stay, <laughs> like, it's a lot of parts, yeah. I th feel like I got lucky and my wiring was right first time. Started right up, fired right up. Man, I love it. Yeah, I'm just sitting back reclining, enjoying the road. I got those bars from uh, Reese Wood Co. There's some uh, six bins that kind of go out like right at the end. Makes it really nice and comfortable with the seat and everything the way you're sitting back in the hardtail. Got them from a raffle and it was like $10 a ticket. That one, I bought two of the tickets. Actually, before that, I was trying to get another pair of bars from him from a raffle. I've only bought one, and I didn't win. So I was like, all right, let's up the ante, because these were the bars I really wanted. Death Stalker Customs. If you want to get a fucking badass paint job, go to Death Stalker Customs. And if you don't know what you want, better. Tell him to hook you up. Tell him to do his own thing, because you saw my bike. If you want that, he's the guy, yeah. All right, so this guy's not on Instagram, but like to me, he is like the most humble, like godfather of like motorcycles or choppers that I've ever met. He's never asked me to pay him for anything. I love this guy. His name's Wade. Wade Cook lives in Long Beach. If you want to support him uh, in Long Beach, there's this uh, salon called Freebirds. His wife works there. They own it together. But yeah, I shout out that guy, and then you know just all the homies in the garage. All the other builders, everybody, not just, you know, the people here, the people who aren't here as well. I'm on Instagram, I'm looking at everybody's shit. Like, it all inspires me, and I hopefully that mine inspired everyone else as well. And yeah, I definitely want to thank Throttle Addiction because it wouldn't be what it is without you guys. My name is Adrian, I'm from Long Beach, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's, uh, it's not words. I say that to people a lot, and they think like, oh, is it symbols or shit? No, I-T-S-N-O-T-W-O-R-D-S. <laughs>
uh, January 2022 and uh, put it into my stable amongst my other bikes and weren't sure what to do with it at the time. And then eight months ago from today, Mike approached me about a bike to build for Born Free and it was the obvious contender at the time. So eight months ago, stripped it down, built it, stripped it down again and built it back up with all the shiny stuff. Yeah, the square barrel was basically uh, leftover war department uh, stuff that Triumph had made for the RAF. Basically, the engine was part of a generator set that they would wheel out to the Lancaster bombers in World War II and they would power the, power the planes and they were on a trolley. And so after the war, they had a surplus of these alloy cylinders and barrels that they weren't sure what to do with, but it was said that there would be good application for the motorcycles. And it was Triumph's first use of an alloy cylinder and an alloy head. But they made, they made TR5s, 200 in, four, in 49, 250, as well as they used it on the Grand Prix GP race bikes in 1949 also. So they're very unique. They're the only Triumphs that came out with a, a straight out port instead of a splayed head. And uh, yeah, they're very rare and very lovely. Very nice. They were rigid frames, yeah. The TR5 and all Triumphs for that matter were rigid frame bikes until 1954. 1954 was the first year that Triumph used a swinging arm. Now with the bike that I brought over here to the show, it's actually got a swing arm conversion that was manufactured by Bill Martin, who was a Triumph dealer in Burbank during the day. Bill Martin had lots of experience in the 30s racing sprint cars. Sprint cars back in the 30s were all rigid. There was no suspension on any of the four wheels. So if he, worked a way, he worked a way out of keeping all four wheels on the ground via suspension. And in the 50s, he transferred that application to a motorcycle. In 1953, he used one of these on a Triumph Thunderbird Richard and turned it into a swinging arm. And the guy that rode it, his name was Vern Roberson. He actually won the Big Bear Enduro in 53 on this Triumph with a Bill Martin swinging arm. And he started manufacturing them. And this was, of course, before Triumph even offered a swinging arm bike. And the shocks that he used were off a, a Chrysler, a 1940s Chrysler automobile. And that's why they're twice the size of the regular shocks used on Triumph 54 and onwards. So that's basically it. Most people went from swinging arm frames to rigid frames and we went the other way. So rigid to swinging arm. Very unique. Bill Martin used the Wassel duck build rear fenders on the kits that he sold. And he sold these kits as a bolt on, bolt off. You know, do it in an afternoon, no others, you know, do it with hand tools kind of conversion. It retains most of the original parts that it came with in 49. It's got the, the original gas tank and oil tank on there. Um, I was able to use most of the parts that came on the bike, but the bike that I actually restored sat outside in San Jose for 60 years. So it was well roached when I got it. And I was able to save most of it, but some of it I couldn't. But So as I say, most of it retains the original TR5 parts. Always been a Triumph guy, yeah, always been a Triumph guy since I was a teenager and, uh, you know, I've restored many British motorcycles in my time, but Triumph being the majority, you know, I specialise mostly on Triumphs, also build Norton's BSAs, but I'm a Triumph guy, as they say, you know. A lot of talent helped me out with fabrication, welding, painting, uh, CAD plating, chrome plating. I've got a list of about 25 guys that I want to write down and get published somewhere because without those guys, I, I couldn't have done it. And especially in the time frame, I was going to these guys and saying, hey, can you do me this? I need it yesterday. And they tell me to get out of here or most of them all done it. And you know, some really great people, some really great talent that helped me. Johnny Green out of Altadena. My website is tonupclassics.com. I can be found on Instagram, tonupjohnny, T-O-N-U-P. J-O-N-N-I-E, Turn Up Johnny.
Hi guys, I'm Becky Gable, AKA, actually it's Axel, and I'm from Long Beach, California. Well, I live there, but I'm actually from Saskatchewan, Canada. Last year, I was an invited builder to Born Free, Born Free 13. I built a 48 pan head, a lot of the work on my own, and I had a lot of help, and I built a badass bike, and this year, we were like, let, we need to have women involved again in the show. You know, there wasn't another woman invited builder. So we said, let's just have an entire women's section. There's a story behind each one of these bikes. So they're either built by a woman, ridden by a woman, or the history behind them is woman told and has like a really cool story around them. And every single bike here is different. The woman who rides it is chosen, not just because she has a badass bike, but she's a badass too she's either like a mom or owns a business or does paradise road show or like puts puts on events or rides across the country with her family every year five thousand miles you know this is to be like look we're here too you can do it too you can ride this but you could also own this and build this so that's what axel's hideout is all about this is the first time we've ever put on the hideout i'm putting this on with harley davidson and the plan for me anyways is to make this a traveling show and go to other events around the States. And yesterday, Saturday, was the first ever hideout day. There was men and women and lots of kids, lots of little girls, like little girls sitting on bikes and stuff. And I was just like, damn, this is, this is cool. It's just kind of creating that community. And I think that yesterday that happened. The plan is everywhere that we do this, we'll have new bikes with women from that area or who have ties to that area. So it'll be cool because obviously this Axel's hideout is very chopper vibe, but that's because we're in Southern California and we're at Born Free. So if we do this at Sturgis or Milwaukee, it'll be more the vibe of what the women there build and ride. That's the whole meaning of this is to like get women inspired and like see this story of where Santa came from and how she came to like have this bike and be like, oh, that's like relatable. I could do that and then want to be a part of it next year or the year after. I got invited to Born Free last year. And I was like, can I build a Evo Sportster? And they were like, yeah, you can build whatever you want. And I was like, OK, so I started looking around and I found my budget to like buy the bike was around five grand, whatever it was going to be. And I found this panhead transmission and frame all together for five grand in torrents <laughs> and so i just went and picked it up but it was complete basket case like nothing everything needed to be rebuilt everything needed to be taken apart and looked at so what i did was i um, rented a corner off of hog supply which is a downtown chopper shop in la i had a lift sponsored to me and my rent included using all of hog supplies tools and the knowledge of them and them and their employees they rebuild all the old harley motors their only harley shop so i actually got to go through this entire motor with them and like learn how to rebuild a motor and transmission i did the all of the bending of the pegs and the controls and the sissy bar myself and I actually took the old pistons that were in the motor that I bought and I, I learned how to sandcast. YouTube literally taught me how to build this bike. Um, <laughs> I sandcasted the old original pistons into my bird deflector, my kicker pedal and my headlight mount. So that's, that's the, the old pistons that were in my motor originally are on this bike now. FNA made that headlight. He's a builder this year, he's really rad. And then I had um, Flying Weasel do the paint, but I decided that I was gonna try and do the frame myself. I'd actually never painted anything before. And I was like, well, I don't wanna ship him the frame because it'd be too, take too much time, it'd be too expensive. So I was like, oh, it's easy, it's just gonna be black. Like, I'll just paint it myself. No, so I, I bought it, it was molded, but I had it sandblasted and then I did all of the Bondo myself and painted it all myself and that was like a massive, massive learning curve and it took me two weeks actually to do the, just the frame itself. So that's one of my favorite parts of this bike. Yeah, it's just, it's a cool, little, awesome, great girl's bike. My name is Becky Gable. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, actually it's Axel, that's my TikTok and my YouTube as well. You can follow my brand, Axel Co. I sell motorcycle gloves and I do merch. Thank you for wanting to know what I'm doing here. <laughs>
I'm Megan Margison from Torrance, California, and I ride a 1964 Panhead Chopper. I grew up in a chopper family. Both of my parents each ride their own chopper, and as soon as I turned 18, I knew that I wanted one too. So we started the build. It took about six and a half years. My first part was the rear wheel, <laughs> and then over time, we just accumulated the parts, kept building. 2017, we completed the build and I've been riding it ever since. We ride all over the country. We ride into Canada every summer as a family, and that's, that's our favorite thing to do is long chopper trips. All of our bikes are what we would consider a South Bay style chopper. Some of the things on my bike specifically that I would associate with that are the auxiliary fuel tank, the South Bay swoop style sissy bar, and that's actually to be able to hold that extra fuel in the back, just the weight of it. I get about three gallons of gas on the front take and we put about one and a half in the back. I can comfortably go about 150 miles in between gas stops. On my bike, we put a right side electric start on it. So I do not have a kicker. People have their opinions on that, but I will tell you, I've, I've ridden a bike across the country with a kicker on it and I'm very appreciative of my electric start. <laughs> it's not giving me any problems and we're, we're building my sister's pan head right now and it's getting the same one. My family grew up in the South Bay and that's a place where Dick Allen made a big impression in the chopper world. And my uncle happened to know Dick Allen, had a two into one exhaust on his bike. And when he passed away, my dad got the bike and it's really special that I actually got to put that exhaust onto my build. And so I kind of have a little piece of him riding with me on all my adventures. The most special part of my bike is that it was built by my dad um, and being a part of that process made the bike priceless to me. It is my most prized possession and I'll never part with it. People have offered me money for it and I could never part with it. It holds way too much sentimental value for me. When Becky asked me to be a part of Axel's Hideout this year, I was so honored, especially once I saw the list of ladies who were invited. These are ladies that have inspired me for years, and so to see my name amongst theirs was really special. I'm just excited that there's a place at Born Free where ladies get to come and hang out and talk about motorcycles. My favorite thing to do, so. I'm Megan Margison from Torrance, California, and you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Megan Margison.
This recap video is brought to you by Throttle Addiction. With thousands of chopper parts, a 90-day return policy, and free shipping on orders over $100, ThrottleAddiction.com is the best place to build your dream bike. Check out their selection of custom handlebars, fuel tanks, made in the USA hardtails, and so much more. For more than a decade, Throttle Addiction has been manufacturing and selling the best custom parts on the market. Build, customize, and ride with ThrottleAddiction.com. So I'm Jared Smith, I'm from Vallejo, California, and I brought a 1960 pan head lower with a shovel head top end and two front heads. So I call it a FLXR. The build is, uh, uh, like I said, a 1960 pan head lower with a shovel head top end. Uh, I wanted to design my own rocker covers, sort of inspired by Hot Dock and Kennedy heads, but with my, or hot, uh, rocker boxes, but with my take on them started with a 3D print of those heads and 3D scans of stock shovel uh, rocker boxes and then took that 3D printed my design as I catted it out and then worked with Christian Newman to see CNC machine those uh, and then custom rocker shafts in supports for that uh, side oiling from the lower end. Yeah, absolutely. I've never gone this far with engine work before. Just modifying the two front heads was like uh, I'd never done that intense of like cast aluminum welding before. So that was like two, three solid weeks of work, just modifying the heads, getting them ready to go with the intakes in the right position uh, for the carbs. And the carbs are kind of a weird downdraft key and FCR that is made for Ducati L twins. So they're at an angle and they look like they're downdrafts. But if you look at the bike again, the float bowls are actually level to the ground. So it's really only the slides and the Venturi are angled but then the float bowl sits nice and level yeah i would say like visually and like performance wise with like the dual six piston calipers up front and the six piston in the rear and then isr controls all around uh from sweden the it was supposed to feel a bit like a 80s or 90s moto gp bike so every bolt on the build is cerakoted as well the whole frame is uh handlebars it's thin and it shows off like the metal finishing and it doesn't hide anything. There was a certain amount of honesty to it. Like I'm just building this stuff in my garage and uh, like Bondo is not my thing. And so I didn't really want to cover up anything. Like if they're not the world's greatest welds, I just wanted that exposed and uh, left how it was. And uh, Cerakote is really good for that because it's like two tenths of a thousandth thick, uh, but yet really strong. So the idea there was just as you tension the chain 
to use the stock sidecar loops on the rear axle plate as pins to lock that in from rotation, but allow the whole caliper hanger to just float left and right and back and forward as it wants as you tension the chain. So that was another two, three weeks of work just by itself. That is an infield racing primary for an XR750. So again, going with this pan head, shovel head combo with an XR750 that the whole build uh, is like aiming towards. And uh, just, yeah, I just love the idea of using an XR primary on a big twin. So that means really like, that's a, that's a lot shorter for the unit motor of a Sportster or an XR. So we had to extend it, but obviously it's cone shaped. So as you extend a cone, the angles get off on the sides of it. So it wasn't just cutting it in half and stretching it. It was sort of cut it in half, stretch it, and then re-angle the taper to make it look like it came that way. And then it was important to me for the rear of it to actually be Harley aluminum. So I found a really busted KH motor uh, half and I cut that apart like somebody would do for divorcing a motor, uh, like a unit motor. I just cut that apart and use the flange where the primary bolts to on a Sportster motor uh, as the backing plate for that, that attaches to the panhead motor. I think all told like the outer primary and the inner primary took like 15 or 20 splice pieces of aluminum. Oh, it's uh, absolutely the access to the, uh, to the main sprocket uh, because for an XR750, you're either gonna use a rear wheel starter or a sprocket nut starter uh, on the motor. And so the access port that, that, that you see on that primary uh, covering the, the main pulley, uh, like that's the benefit there. And I actually like, I, I would like to try to use it on this to start the motor. You know, I think it's literally like, pushing myself and learning new skills. This whole thing to me was like an elaborate excuse to like walk away with new skills. So when I started, like I had done cast aluminum welding before. I had done like simple motor repairs, like a crack here or a broken motor mount tab. Like I had done that sort of stuff. But the amount of filler rod and time that I put into just the heads, like got me to a whole new level with cast aluminum welding and then the primary as well. So I just really pushed myself on that. And I'm just super happy to like walk away like knowing how to do new stuff. Bandits Mikey on Instagram for the paint. Uh, it's the first thing anybody says about the bike is they love the blue color and I do too. It's a VW uh, blue color from the 50s called Dub Blue. And uh, I think it's really like underestimated how hard it is to pull off like a one color solid paint job in a sea of bikes that have pinstripes or glitter or any sort of graphics like to pull off a solid color paint job and have it stand out like he crushed it jared smith vallejo california and it's smith process
My name is Seth Nefis. And I'm Casey Nefis. We're from Portland, Oregon, and we brought a 1957 Triumph per unit. It's a city inspired show bike. And we called it uh, the Green Dream. We started with uh, unstamped engine cases. We really liked the early pre unit Triumph tanks, how they had the, knee, the insets for the knee pads. So we wanted to mimic that. And then we wanted to make a really hot rod and motor yep. too. So it's a 750, 750 big board kit. Yeah. yeah. With some hot cams and some other yeah. stuff. And, and one other thing we really liked uh, before we got started was uh, the dual carbs. There's an AMO monoblock 689 and 389, and they uh, mirror each other. And that mirrored look was like one of the first concepts we really wanted to execute. Um, and then kind of carried that symmetrical thing throughout the bike. Had a few aftermarket Webco parts in the 60s we really liked and wanted to incorporate in that. And then we kind of took some of the stylings from those and did a lot of custom work and fab. And then we had a good friend, Nathan Sykes, do the paint and, and that was really awesome. He's uh, really cool to work with and executed exactly what we wanted perfectly. And, in recent years, there's been some amazing, rigid Triumph free units. So we wanted to build something that we could at least feel was unique uh, to, to the show, and that's kind of why we went Swain Arm style and found some inspiration just through some, you know, 1950s and 60s hot rod magazines. And, it's kind of a mashup of all the bikes we like. Yeah. We really like the, you know, 50s and 60s desert sleds, yep. and then we also love the uh, early 50s, late 40s, like rigid triumphs, which are really cool, and, and then 60s choppers. Yeah, all the pre-units and stuff, so it's just kind of like a mashup of everything that we love in a motorcycle. We have very similar style yeah, when it comes to yeah. certain things, definitely motorcycles, Yeah, uh, and it's kind of funny, like sometimes I'll get into something before him, and he'll get into something before us, and we kind of like... Yeah. feed off of each other. But even kind of simple things is like the exhaust yeah. we made and where it bends up. Yeah. We both went home that night after doing like the first kind of mock-up and like looked at photos and we both first thing in the morning were like something needs to happen. We here. have to shorten we that one section. Same idea. Yeah. So we're, we're on the same page with a lot of it. We also work together as a day job doing Red Clouds Collective. So the whole time we're doing our work we're just chatting about the bike, you know. We wanted to think everything out and make all the mounts and everything like super hidden and kind of like make all the custom stuff super clean and like unnoticeable almost, you know. So you have to look at it and then once you see it, you're like, oh wow, that's really cool. I didn't even notice that. Because that's what impresses us about bikes when yeah, we yeah. see it, you know. Also, hiding the ugliness. Yeah. Like, where's the regulator and stuff like that? Like, we. You're not, you're not going to find the regulator. I mean, it's a lot of stress to build a bike for Born Free. It pushed our limits. I mean, just in this build, he's got a family with two little kids. I'm just a single dude. So I I just took on a lot of the like labor. The polishing. Polishing, take, like welding a lot of it. We'll sit there and tat stuff together and get it all in place. And then he's like, I got to go. I'm just like, all right, I'll, another couple hours, you know. Seth gets all the credit for making it look shiny, for sure. Yeah. yeah. When it comes time to build a pretty bike, Triumphs definitely takes the cake, in our opinion. Yeah. They were our first love of, yeah. as a motorcycle. Yeah. We had a friend whose dad was really into them, so as like a 16-year-old kid, I'd go outside and like in his garage and be like, dude, these bikes are sweet. And then the diversity of Triumphs yeah. from the 50s and 60s as well, um, with race, choppers, uh, desert sleds, whatever, like, it's, it's a cool, it's a motorcycle that you can take that engine and like, put it in different frames to do whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, Red Clouds, uh, it was one of those things, there was a huge void in the, in the world, in my opinion, in like, around 2010, 2012, for clothing that just fit well and was quality. Uh, and made I mean, in the USA. And made in the USA. Long story short, was just like, man, I need to mash up like a, a sweet ass looking and fit in pair of pants with something durable. And uh, that kind of just set the tone for what our brand became. My name's Seth Nefis. I'm from Portland, Oregon. It's my brother, 
Casey Nefis, also live in Portland, Oregon. And uh, you can follow us at Red Clouds Collective on Instagram and uh, or redcloudscollective.com. It's got a Sig Jenny shovel in it. I don't know the make and model in here, but uh, it rides really fast. <laughs> Has a sick XA front end. Let me know y'all, that thing's for sale. And uh, 1821 wheels. You gotta go that style, big boy. I like it, I ride it around SoCal, and we're here born free, 14. I would just say I got it as a roller, and then found the motor, found the pipes, found all the pieces, and it was just assembling all the pieces. And then I worked with my mechanic Rico out of Pomona and he helped me assemble it final stages. Belt drives from BDL represent Brea, hell yeah. And um, yeah, it came together in like less than a year's time. So this is the first hardtail shovel head. Really dig the style, riding, it's a little rough. <laughs> but if you find a groove, you know, just find your spot, get your little back support, it cruises. Cruises really good. Is that super reliable? One kick, that's it. Yeah, my name's Cameron. I'm from San Bernardino, Berdu, and uh, follow me at Camo12.
My name is George Salazar. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I brought my 2000 Sportster 1200 Custom to the show. I always loved choppers, and I, I, I sold my old bike after El Diablo, and um, I went from knowing nothing about building a bike, and uh, I just went all in, and I checked up uh, Chop Coats forums, and you know, it, I took some welding classes, I did all the fab work myself, I had a, I rewired everything, and yeah, so shout out to all the home builders that are just like learning as you go. If I could do it, anybody could do it. I hear a lot of good reviews about the throttle addiction kit, so I went ahead and put the trigger. I think I, I found them at um, Born Free 2021. Yeah, I took some classes, uh, some welding classes down the street from my house, and I wanted to do everything myself, myself so I went for about six months and learned how to TIG weld, and yeah, I went from there. Just the fabrication on it, just like me being able to like wrench in my garage, not knowing anything, and just picking it up and learning as I go. So I have a friend out of uh, Long Beach and um, I wanted to support local painters, you know, small time businesses and I've seen his work online and um, I reached out to him and I told him this, I, I, I gave him just a free design, just like this is the colors I want and um, I let him, I just let him do what he, what he does best. My name is George Salazar, I'm from Los Angeles, California and you can find me on IG it's uh, George underscore McFlight. My name is Scotty, I am Junior's Handmade. Uh, I brought a 1978 cone shovel head. I'm in Costa Mesa, California. Full custom, everything, uh, shortened frame, altered dimensions, it's three up, 29 degrees, neck, 
Uh, I shortened the neck over half of an inch. I shortened the rear frame over inch and a half. Uh, basically to play dimension on uh, big bike dimensions, but small package. Totally custom frame. It's uh, a shovel head neck, highly modified. Basically the only thing stock is the VIN boss. Stock cradle, everything else is custom made, fully metal finished, chrome polished. Brutal. I stopped counting at over 200 hours, and I'm not the only one. Matt Rep Metals has a chrome frame here. He stopped counting around the same time, so you just keep going until it's perfect, and that's all you got. If you left any factory of welds, if they're good welds, you can smooth those out, but otherwise you gotta grind those out, re-weld those, and then just welding. I, I use a lot of silicon bronze uh, for my blending, so I do a regular weld and then a thicker weld with silicon bronze, blend that out, and then just hours of sanding. An incredible amount of time, uh, not only for myself, but also the guys who polish all of my stuff. They did all the prep to mirror polish the raw steel, dip it, mirror polish the copper, dip it. You know, it's, I gave it to them polish ready and they still had a ton of work to get it to being as perfect chrome as it is. So I'm proud of that and they're proud of that too. The gas tank, the shape of it, and the weird tunnel that's too wide for any bike kind of made the tank look like it floated. So made custom mounts to actually make it float. So you can see all the way up inside of it and there's no mounts uh, instead of it sitting low on the frame where you can't see up. Yeah, the oil tank and the fender is one piece. Uh, the fender has separate molding on just an existing fender that I bought, but the oil bag's all custom made, welded to the fender. It all mounts to the same pickup points and everything, so it's all one, one piece. Yeah, the little recesses and stuff, that's all in sheet metal. Uh, everything's pretty much metal. There's not very much Bondo, just a little bit on some of the, you know, inseams, um, but not much. Yeah, it's all basically sheet metal shaped. This is the first frame I have gone that deep on. So I learned that my frame jig could be better. Uh, it's good for stock frames, but not a single starting point on that frame matches anything factory. So, you know, if you sit my frame next to a stock frame, it, none of it matches. So kind of starting from, I have a good frame jig for stock frames, trying to do a custom frame where nothing matches was definitely the challenge. Junior's Handmade is full custom. Uh, I do full builds, everything from rebuild engines all the way through to the bike being wired, fired, and out the door. Um, I also just do full setups for people. If you've got all your parts ready to go and you just need someone to help weld stuff, you know, set it up properly, make sure your parts work, I do that too. Um, and then I also have a parts line. My name is Scotty. I am Junior's Handmade in Costa Mesa. And you can find me at Junior's Handmade on Instagram or juniorshandmade.com is my website.
My name is Brian Jessup. I'm from Saskatoon, Canada, and I brought a 68 FL shovelhead. The bike is, I mean, essentially a muscle bike. Uh, it's a 68 FL motor. Not really recognizable as that anymore. Uh, it's got some wild rocker boxes from Finland, Kennedy style rocker boxes. Uh, dual magneto set up on it with a one off custom cam cover for that. It's a four and three quarter inch stroker uh, in a single loop frame built by Ben Jeff in Indiana. Paint by a good friend of mine, Cole J. Bush uh, from Saskatoon as well. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just a straight up kind of 80s style muscle bike, late 80s, early 90s, Italian brakes, Italian Seriani front end, kind of got some oddball parts on it, stuff you don't maybe normally see, um, but that's what kind of gets my juices flowing. It's, it was an accomplishment, it was a lot of work, but uh, I'm really proud of the bike. I was, you know, I've kind of done everything as far as choppers go. I've, I did the 60s choppers for a long time, still love those bikes. Um, you know, I, I built a stock panhead. I acquired an old, like, club bike that was like an 80s tough guy club bike. Uh, it was a local bike, uh, has a lot of local history, and, you know, I've always appreciated kind of the muscle bike scene, and, but I didn't know a lot about it. I was just very ingrained in other types of bikes. And then when I got that bike, I kind of dug deep into it, and, you know, when I dig into something, I dig in pretty deep started changing the style of bikes I was building and, and just having a lot of fun with these bikes now and, and they're a blast to ride so you know. The external oil drains from the top end that's basically an old Indian Larry thing. Uh, well I mean somebody probably did it before him it's, it's probably an old drag bike mod and basically it's cooler oil the oil isn't draining through the cylinders like on a standard shovel head. Um, so the oil drains externally, cools the oil. Uh, there's a few other things about it, uh, being big bore cylinders and that, that it has advantages, but uh, yeah. The most time consuming part of the build was just all the handmade parts. Um, I made a lot of parts out of aluminum. I've had a mill and a lathe for a long time, and I've basically just made, you know, spacers, axles, modified stock parts, different things like that. And I wanted to really push myself on this build to basically design some new parts, uh, create, make them myself. You know, I did all my own polishing, all my own machining. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of hours into the, on the mill and the lathe for sure. The piece that I'm most proud of that I made is probably the belt cover. It's uh, a lot of hours again, machining, welding. I basically took a stock inner primary uh, from an electric start bike. I sectioned it, I narrowed it. Um, I made an outer cover for it. I made internal linkage uh, inside the cover for the shifting. So all, all, the, all the linkage is basically between the belt inside the cover. Uh, so that would be the part I'm most proud of that I made. The part that I'm probably the most proud of on the bike is the cam cover uh, that Chris Weiss partnered up with me on. And it was my idea, his design, his machining, and it's just, it's just such a cool part. Uh, super proud of that. I wanted uh, basically a blank shell for the tank for my bike. Um, you know, I wasn't going to make one from scratch because it's not necessary with the parts available now. But, you know, I looked at all the shells that were available on the market. I looked at the Throttle Addiction one, loved the shape, ordered it up, got it home. Uh, I didn't have to do much to it. I sectioned out a little bit off the bottom and, and the shape is perfect. It's got just the right taper, just the right height, just the right width and turned out killer. Big shout out to Ben Jeff for the frame, Cole J. Bush and my boy Seasick on the paint, and uh, BNC Cycles on the seat. Anybody else that just kind of helped me out along the way. And of course, Mike and Grant with Born Free for giving me this opportunity. My name is Brian Jessup. I'm from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. And you can follow me on Instagram at Jessup Cycle or Oh, I guess that's it. <laughs> We're going to line the whole stage with all of these invited builders. We've tried to do our best to find some of the best talent, best passion, best style. We've got a few builders from Japan. We've got one from Canada. We've got them from all over the states. All of these folks built these bikes that are in front of the Born Free booth right here in this fenced-in area. The first place is going to go to Moon Eyes. We also have big checks for uh, third, second, and first place that uh, we give these guys. And how the invited builder voting works is they all vote amongst themselves. They can't vote for themselves, 
but they have to pick a first, second, and third. And we tally up these points. First place gets three points, second gets two, and third gets one point. We add them all up, and that's how we come up with their winners. So it's a jury by peers with amongst these guys on stage right now. Third place comes from a place with a lot of potatoes. It's Mr. Which we have a bunch of dudes. How many people are from Idaho on stage? Raise your hands. <laughs> we got, they, they raise them right up there. Third place goes to Todd Asen from Saul Small City Cycles. Yeah. Which for his knucklehead. Yeah, Todd. Second place comes from a guy that doesn't want to arm wrestle you. I don't know, maybe, but he's from a, a lot, uh, a lot more mellow climate. Uh, I don't know. Uh, he built a, a beautiful, beautiful bike, and it's Mr. Beware Choppers, Gary Royal. <laughs> Weston's gonna pick everyone up tonight. You should guess my weight. Pick him up and guess how much he weighs. Those checks aren't any good. So first place also, not only do they get $3,000, they get a trip to, with them and their bike to Yokohama, Japan. We built Born Free with the idea and the, the influence how Moon Eyes runs everything in Japan. I know I say this every year, but the way we were treated and, and the way that they run everything was an inspiration to Mike and I. And we've tried to do as much of that as we can over the years. First place, invited builder, going to Japan, getting all this, is Wrecked Metals. Yes. Wrecked Metals, the boy, more boys from Idaho. Built a beautiful, beautiful motorcycle. All the invited builders picked Wrecked Metals enough for them to win. <laughs> Brothers got a hug! <laughs> I don't know if they can all sit still enough, so there's actually three of them here. This is the Wreck Metals team here. There you go, congratulations. You just won a trip to Japan and screw Disneyland. This is the best thing ever, thank you so much. For <laughs> Absolutely, congratulations. What job well done, all you guys. Typically, the performance award goes to a modern Harley, but there was one performance bike in that lineup, the Invited Builder lineup, that we just fell in love with. So we made a little pivot, and so the Invited Builders will get both awards. Best custom bike was amazing. Was, I mean, every bike out there was amazing. This was a really tough year. You guys all you know, understand that, right? This is the hardest job all year long for us. Absolutely. All right, wrecked medals, that 59 pan head. Wow. Wrecked medals again! Wrecked medals with the Harley Davidson Custom Styling Award. Congratulations. <laughs> that bike is bitching. What? He says. We loved it. Perfect proportions, <laughs> great pain. I think a lot of people love this motorcycle. We fell in love with it. Brian Jessup's shallow hat. Brian Jessup, all the way from Canada. Well done, my friend. Long Thanks. winters made him build this amazing performance bike as one of our invited builders. Let's get uh, Rec Metals and Brian up here. There's a ton of work going into all this stuff that you see on stage here, the, the bikes that these guys built. Really kind of spelled out a competition bike. Is WL Flat Track with uh, Cheetah Customs. Toshiyuki, Mr. Toshiyuki Osawa. Toshiyuki Osawa from uh, Tokyo, Japan, the Cheetah but Custom Toshi, Cycles. I really, I really just loved your bike. It was uh, very nice to talk to you yesterday a little about it. They tally them up. You vote on our invited builder bikes. And over the last two days, they tallied them up. And the people's choice goes to Mr. Scotty Duttweiler of Junior's Custom. Junior's! for his beautiful 78 Get Harley Shovelhead. Head. There you go, People's Choice Award. Congratulations, Scotty. We have uh, the Born Free Award, 
is something that is Mike and I give to uh, a, a bike builder that just embodies everything that we love about this, the passion, the style. And without further ado, Mr. Uh, Weston from Boise, Idaho gets the Born Free Award. Yes. This guy, are you gonna pick me up? He picked everyone else up yesterday. Yeah. No, Somebody okay. pick him up. <laughs> oh, come on. Weston is gonna do a builder boot camp next year. Get all of us in the shape I need it. All right, now we've got the uh, Rider Award. We did this a long time ago, and there's a lot of people that have crossed thousands and thousands of miles and even oceans uh, to get here. And this guy rode his, he rode down from Canada on his wild panhead chopper. This young man uh, is quite full of life, Mr. Cactus. Cactus. Is that his name? You call him Cactus? Yes, his name's Cactus. That's awesome. Best actual come biker, come actual come biker, come biker come born free. Crazy. There's a real biker here. The born today. free rider award. This yeah. guy, Cactus. Cactus. Yeah. Uh, here we go again, huh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been talking. I've been talking too much again. I lost my voice. <laughs> That's all right. This guy loves motorcycles. He loves people. He loves riding. So there you go, Cactus. Thank you very much, everybody. We're going, uh, I don't know where we're going from here. Somewhere down the road, any way the wind blows. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Cactus, everybody. Best paint is a tough one, because there's obviously a ton of awesome paint out here. And this is a uh, really clean, subtle, well thought out, kind of a sleeper paint job that just gets better and better and better. And it goes to the Nephus brothers and their pre unit triumph. One of the builders right behind you, that beautiful green pre-unit. Congratulations. Nathan Sykes did the paint. Uh, he's a great friend and an amazing painter. So thank you. Nathan actually painted a bunch of bikes here, I believe. So congratulations, guys. And to Nathan. Yeah. Yeah, he's Pacific Northwest. These guys are from Portland. Best Japanese goes to a guy that knows his way around this stuff. Mr. Blacked out everything and he didn't build a black bike uh, for this customer. Mr. Oliver Jones from the cut rate, the KZ drag bike. Oh, you're already, man, this guy's confident. Congratulations. Thanks guys, thank you. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that at all. He wasn't expecting that at all, there you go. Best British goes to the, the Nephus brothers. Get best British. Damn. Come on back up. Two in a row. Ha ha ha. Best British. Congratulations. All right, Casey, you got to talk. Thank you. Um, we're always the underdogs with the British, but we love them so much, so we're going to keep building them. Thank you. Well, you're underdogs, and we love you so much. All right, best pre-unit goes to a guy that knows his way around these things a time or two, and it's a, a super uh, rare bike that might be a sleeper to a lot of you, but Mr. Johnny Green, the mayor of Pasadena. Yes. Altadena, excuse me. Alta Altadena, 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 Pasadena. Johnny Green, best pre-unit. Best accent. Johnny knows how to talk. We'll get him on up here. Thank you very much for this award. Lovely, lovely, lovely. It's an honor to be here with all these really, really great builders. Thousands of lovely bikes, and hey, it's just really cool to be here with them. So, nice one. Thank you. Get this serious. is the best chopper is a big one. Now that Jeff's gone, we get serious. Yeah. Best chopper goes to, and this is hard every year, and this thing is super far out, and I don't know, never really quite seen anything like it with the platform and all that stuff. It goes to, I still can't ever say his real name because I've always known him as Machi. Uh, Machi. Oh man. He's one of our favorite Japanese guys that's been over here in the States with a crazy craftsmanship and style. Mr. Machi or Messiah something or other. I can't. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Best shovel head. Best shovel head is a tough one because there's always so many good shovel heads here. But this one, that it was just hard to deny. It was super hard to deny. And it goes to a, another just. You know, wonderful Canadian, Brian Jessup. Brian yes. Jessup, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Brian Jessup, congratulations. congratulations. Brian. Best shovel head. Here we go, best pan head. 
Best Panhead, again, equally as tough. This one goes to a full show chopper uh, from the Bay Area, Mr. Gary Royal. He won the Invited Builder second place. I should know this stuff. Invited Builder second place that we gave away yesterday for his awesome crazy blue panhead with the tall pipes and Indian girder. Best flathead. Best flathead goes to a guy that, again, is super talented. You met him a little bit ago. Mr. Toshiyuki Osawa, Cheetah Custom Cycles. Cheetah. Cheetah. Toshiyuki. Best flathead. There you go, for the same bike that uh, Vince Burns was talking about. Award of Excellence. These are bikes that definitely needed some spotlight and some more emphasis on. It's hard when we only have so many awards and so many amazing bikes. Uh, but we would love to give an Award of Excellence to Jared Smith, Scotty Duttweiler, and Wesley Hoke. Come on up, all award of excellences. There's Wesley. There's Scotty again. Come on out here. All super high craftsmen out there in our uh, invited builder group. Congratulations. We've got best knucklehead, which is super tough every year because there's all kinds of crazy, amazing builds all kinds of uh, survivors, all kinds of historic bikes, a little bit of everything. And uh, this thing is well-deserved, probably not expected, but, uh, and he may not even be over here, but uh, the Dick Allen locomotion knucklehead, Todd, it's been around longer than I've been alive. Oh yeah. This was a, a real deal cross country knucklehead jammer and uh, goes out to Todd in the uh, locomotion. He's probably not up and around here. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. Best knucklehead, Dick Allen's locomotion brought back to life and living its best life again. Yeah, second time around. So, best in show, best in show is going to go to Japan as well. We got Makoto coming up here with the uh, big poster. The best in show in our invited builder first place, uh, which we voted on, or we presented last, yesterday, which was Wrecked Metals. They're going to Japan as well as the best in show, which we're gonna tell you. You get a $3,000 big phony check from us. Wow. It ain't phony. <laughs> it ain't phony. And the trip for the the builder and the bike to go to Yokohama, Japan. There was so much debate because there's uh, there's a handful of bikes that yeah. definitely deserve this, and it had to come down to one. And it goes to somebody that we regret very much that did a wonderful job. No, we love him. He did a wonderful job, uh, Mr. Todd Ason from Small City Cycles and his knuckle. Todd Michael Ason. <laughs> Here he goes. Presented by Weston. Weston. Presented by Weston. Weston. Wow. <laughs> Best in show goes to Brian Adams. I mean, Todd Ason. Todd's got something to say. Say something, Todd. Thank you, guys. Uh, all my Idaho boys, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That's it.